This is Coach's Corner. Welcome, Commodore fans, to Coach's Corner, a production of Gulf Coast State College today. Coach Austin Medford and I will be take, talking about how the Lady Commodores did. Normally, Coach Goble's here. Coach, so you're getting a pitch hit today. Oh, yeah. She had to take care of some business, so I'm here. So, so Lady Commodores 23-1 and one overall, 6-1 uh, and one in the Panhandle Conference, uh, ranked number one in the state coaches poll, and then ranked number two in the NJCAA National Poll. Both of those polls will come out again tomorrow. Um, and Coach Austin and I were talking a little bit ahead of time about this, that Odessa, the number one ranked team in the country, lost this weekend. And we've picked up some big wins since the last rankings. Yeah, I think it looks pretty bright that we'd be the number one team again in the country. Odessa got beat by number five, New Mexico, this past weekend in a game when they were down and battled back and almost got New Mexico at the end, but just couldn't quite pull it off. So that gives them their first loss of the season. Uh, ranked number one right now, so they'll probably drop the two, and I think we would go to one. We'll see what happens, though. That's all in the hands of the committee. So, so now the Lady Commodores only played one game uh, yeah. last week, and we had to travel over uh, to Northwest Florida. Uh, always a tough place to play. Um, in a great environment, a great arena, a great gym, uh, but it's always usually a tough place. The Lady Commodores won um, 90-76, and the score, it was a lot tighter game than what that sounds like. Very much so. I mean, it was, it was a one-point game at halftime. Went back and forth the first half. They made a nice 8-0 run right before halftime to cut it to one. Uh, we hurt ourselves a little bit to to let them get it back to one, made a couple not very smart plays down the stretch of the first half, and they cut it to one, and from there it was a ball game. We came out second half, and Chaterick O'Neill made three steals in the first couple minutes that just turned the game back around and got us back up eight, ten points, and we went into the fourth quarter up seven and were able to hang on, hit some free throws, and made some shots down the stretch, and we had some things we had to work on. Northwest Florida really – Got 25 offensive rebounds and just exploited us that way, but we're able to hunt, hang on enough to win the game at least. Let's go back and talk a little bit about, about the quarters. It was 23-16 at the end of the first, and Gulf Coast won that quarter. Northwest Florida come back and scored 24-18, to which made it a 41-40 at halftime. Uh, Lady Commodores came out in the third quarter, and third quarters have been traditionally good quarters for the Lady Commodores. Uh, scored 24-18 and then 25-18, um, but it was a was a battle. And you're you're right, O'Neill with those three steals, because used to when I coached that first, you know, seven to eight minutes of that third quarter really established what was going to happen usually the rest of the game. Yeah, that was the turning point. I mean, it could have went either way at that point. If Northwest would have came out and made a run, then you know they would have been the driver's seat for the rest of the game. We would have had to battle back, but we came out and with the aggressor there the second half and made a few plays and got ahead and finished it out. We had five people, I think, in double figures. It was very balanced, so it wasn't a one-man show. So, and Taylor Emery, 21 points. That's pretty much an average game for Taylor now. She's established that that's about what she's going to score a game every night. Yeah, Taylor's been great. She's been, you know, our leading scorer, and we expect that every night from her. We need that to win. Night in, night out in the panhandle. Now, one of the things that was good to see Maria Castro with 17. Um, game before that was a pretty nice game, and now she's another pretty nice game. And Coach Gold and I have been talking about her confidence got down a little bit, and now it's starting to come back at a great time. Yeah, she's definitely struggled with her confidence recently and had two, that was two very good games. She hit, I think, four threes, kind of finding her touch again and getting confident in her shot. and ready to shoot it now before she was kind of hesitant one to pass the ball let other people try to score but she's finally shooting it a little bit again and putting it in and we got to have that to be successful to do that and, and and she does so much on the defensive side of the ball too for the lady commodores and and even when she was struggling shooting she was still playing great defense and rebounding um, not this game the game before that she had a double double where she actually had uh, double figures and rebounding also which we didn't do too good against the Lady Raiders. They just owned the boards uh, in that game. 
Uh, they did. And Maria, speaking of Maria defensively, I know she took a couple charges that game that were big turning points and got the momentum back on our side. But yeah, rebounding uh, on the season, we've been very good. Held teams about nine offensive rebounds a game. And this one, uh, Northwest just was the aggressor, went to the boards hard, strong, and got some rebounds. Got a lot of second chance points, but uh, something we're going to obviously focus on this week in practice and limit that in the upcoming game. Yeah, they had 25 offensive rebounds. Um, 23 defensive rebounds for 48. Lady Commodores had 11, 25 for 36 um, rebounds. So if we also look at scoring, uh, Bennett, 14 points. Um, she's getting better and better every game, Coach. She is. She's improving. She's shooting the ball. She's able to do more things. She came here as just more of a three-point shooter, and now she's getting a little mid-range game, getting to the basket. She's improving every game through the season. So I don't notice that her ball handling skills are getting better because when she first started, there was a lot of high dribbles out there. <laughs> well, she's adjusted to the level of play and the panhandle and the athletes, and she's got to play the point some to give Ty Pierfoy yeah. a little spell um, and get some rest. And then you got Dunlap scored 13 for you. Uh, also, Jalea's coming along. She's getting more and more minutes each game, scoring a little bit, getting rebounds, just getting better. She's bought in, it's improving in practice and games. She's going to be a big, big time player over the next few years. So, uh, and if we look at the Lady Raiders side pretty quick, uh, Tidwell with a double double, 21 points and 11 rebounds. Yeah, she's tough. Came in, played the point, was able to get to the rim, get some mid range shots, and score. We did a good job on their bigs that have been scoring all year. Oliver and um, Brittany Snowden did a pretty good job limiting those two. Because between them, they only had 15 points. Yeah, that's a, 10 for one, 5 for another. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So now, at the tempo we play and the speed that we play, it makes it hard for Oliver. She only played 19 minutes. And I think she got in foul trouble also. Yeah, she got in a little bit of foul trouble. She's gotten better as the year's gone on. She had, I think, 30 on Saturday night against um, Tallahassee. But we did a good job. She got in foul trouble and just limited her touches, and she wasn't able to score. Now the only thing else we'll talk about, we turned it over 14. They turned it over 15, pretty close. Uh, a little high on turnovers, but yeah, not Yeah, a little high. We had a couple before the half that were costly, just weren't very smart that got us. But as a whole, it wasn't too bad. I think it's mistakes that we can limit. It wasn't anything. Okay. So now uh, five games left in the panel conference. And right now, it's still not decided who's panel conference champs, and it may go down to the last game. But three of those five are at home. Uh, so this Wednesday, Pensacola uh, will be here. They're 17 and six overall, two and five in the panel conference, ranked number five in the state coaches poll, and receiving votes in the NJCAA national poll. Um, so what do we expect from that game, Coach? Uh, they're just a bunch of guards, undersized team that's very scrappy. They'll press you the whole game, get after you, they'll run up and down. I mean, last time we played at Pensacola, scored over 100 points. It's going to be an up-tempo game, aggressive. They'll get in you, foul you. They're going to call some, not call some others, and just get after you. So, <laughs> and, they, and, and we defeated them back on January 18th at their place, 103-83, to but that game seemed a lot tighter than that. Well, it was tighter than that, and they uh, didn't have two players that played that are playing some minutes now. Uh, that'll make a that'll make a difference on Wednesday night. So it's going to be a fight, and got to come ready to play and get after it and handle the ball, or you're in trouble. And, and Pensacola realizes they, you know, they have a victory against Tallahassee, and they won against Northwest Florida State College at two and five. They now have to start putting games together. Yeah, this is, I mean, they've got five left as well, and they got to catch either Chipola or Tallahassee to have a chance to make the state tournament. So it's, you know, it's one they, they need to win. To and, if we, and if we look at that by the numbers, we average 86 points a game. They're averaging 83.4. Field goal percentage, 43.6 compared to their 40.5. Three-point three point, uh, percentage, 36.3 compared to their 31.6. Uh, free throw percentage, 70.5 compared to their 61.5. Uh, rebounding, just slightly in their advantage, 40.4 compared to 40. And then assists per game, 14.7 uh, to their 14.2. Uh, they hold their opponents to 66 points a game. We hold our opponents to 60.5. So if you look at the numbers, 
but it's still going to be a scrap in the Bill Harrison Fieldhouse. Yeah, it's going to be an offensive game. Two teams get after it. Pensacola, they love to attack the basket. If you remember the first game, we had I think four or five people in foul trouble in the fourth quarter with four fouls. They just attack you and attack you for 40 minutes. It's going to be a press. And then when they get in the half court, they're going to attack the basket. So it's going to be a fun game to watch, high scoring, a lot of offense. and be pretty entertaining. So, and the Lady Commodore's doing a much better job of defending the ball from the top of the key because there for a while it was it was tough. It's a little shaky there this first couple games. But we've, we've worked on it. We've improved. We've still got ways to go, though, to where we need to get. But. So, and so much better job, and that's taken yes. away a lot of the other team's offense by making those adjustments and improvements. Yeah, our conference has been very guard-oriented this year, so you see the guards the ones scoring for – Almost everybody. Tallahassee's got a post that scores a little bit, but they've got guards that can score. Chipola's got guards that can score. All of them. Northwest had a guard that scored. Pensacola, they've all got guards that can score. So, so And then uh, Saturday, we'll be at home again. Now, this will be the final game against Chipola, so it'll be a big game. Uh, Lady Commodores have um, defeated them twice. So we got a chance to sweep them in a year, which is very, very, very difficult to do. Uh, we played them, we opened panel conference play on January 7th, 184-75, and then we traveled up to Chipola on January 24th, 178-73. Um, but w we know that that's going to be a big game. Oh, they're going to come to play. I mean, they – they almost have to win this game to have a chance to win the conference. I mean, this is, this is it for them. They're going to lay it all out there, and it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a scrappy war. Both teams are going to get after it. they got people that can shoot, score. Barbara Johnson lit us up the first game at, here at Gulf Coast, just got to the basket and had about 30 on us. But. So uh, they're 20-3 and three overall, 4-3 and three in the panel conference, ranked number two in the state coaches poll, ranked number four in the NJCA national poll. They lost to naturally Lady Commodores twice, and at Tallahassee they lost on January 31st, 83-73. So, um, if we look at their numbers, um, you know, Lady Commodores still in pretty good shape. But you take these numbers and throw them out the windows when you play in panel conference. Uh, we average, like we talked about, 86. They're averaging 80 points a game, 43.4%. Field goal percentage, 28% three-point uh, percentage. That's kind of down for Chipola. Normally, they shoot the three-ball much better now. Yeah, it's down. They got two shooters that can really shoot it, Sidney McDonald and Raven Baker. But, yeah, that's a low number for them. So, 68.4 free throw percentage, 41.6 rebounds per game, and 13.9 assists per game. So, they hold their opponents to 54.9 points a game. Well, Chipola is one of the best teams in the country defensively. Every year, they're going to get out, guard you, uh, deny your wings, make you play, going to be on the boards. It's a game that's – you just got to be tough when you play Chipola. Yeah, it's a it's, mentally tough game to play. Yes. So. The third time around, everybody knows what everybody's doing. <laughs> and it's a fight. Just, so, so we need all the Commodore fans to come yes. out and support those games. So uh, if we look quickly at the panel conference standings, Gulf Coast 6-1, uh, Tallahassee five and three, Chipola four and three, um, Pensacola State two and five, and Northwest Florida State one and six. Um, running out of games now. Nobody's clinched, but um, some of them hopes of getting in now are gone. Yeah, Northwest. I mean, being one and six, that team is a lot better than one and six. Right. They're a lot better than that. And they showed that the other night. We saw it when we played them. And on the other end of the standings, you know, we're in the driver's seat. We just got to go in and take care of business and try to get that number one seed for the state tournament and out of the panhandle and try to position yourself for the national tournament if you're fortunate enough to make it. So, um, so we're out of time. So for Coach uh, Medford, I'm James Spikes. I'll be right back, Commodore fans, with Coach Powell and talk about how the Commodores did last week. Commodores come in with a 15-9 and nine overall record, 1-6 and six in the panhandle conference, um, and we went over to Northwest Florida last week, Coach, and played and lost 87-69 against a right now still perfect in the panel conference team. Yeah, Northwest Florida State is having a, another great year. Um, I was very impressed with, with their whole team, but especially 
uh, their guards and wings, their playmakers. I thought that uh, they played very well. And of course, that's a, a great atmosphere and a, and a great home setting that they have there. Uh, but, but they did a nice job and they came out and uh, really, I guess it was 11 points, um, 11 point game at halftime. Uh, you know, and as the score indicates, um, it, was, it was never, the first time we played them, it kind of got away from us a little bit. It was, it was never like that. I felt like even going into the last four or five minutes of the game, you know, we cut it to 11 once, and, but we just couldn't ever, you know, make that run, you know, to kind of, you know, cut it to, you know, six or seven to where they maybe were on their heels. Give them a lot of credit for that. Um, I mentioned on the radio right after the game, uh, I felt like as a coaching staff, we really challenged Raquel Smoot, Londell King, and Cody Johnson. And all three of those men stepped up and played really well for us. I was very proud. Uh, and, and you really could look at it as, um, you know, they got us pretty good the first time. And, and when they did get us, um, their bigs and their guards played better than our bigs and guards. And this, this time it wasn't the case. Our, our post guys uh, hung with theirs and maybe even got the better of them. So uh, by those three freshmen, just a really great effort by Londell, Raquel, and, and Cody. Very proud of them. They stepped up and battled and um, really looked good. We got, we got some high-low action a few times, got a few offensive putbacks, uh, you know, amongst those three men working together. Uh, and defensively, uh, because there are a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times Northwest Florida State will play two bigger fellas. Um, you know, defensively, we matched up well, too. So, uh, bright spot in the, in the loss. Uh, the men, you know, continued to, to battle. Um, you know, it was, it was an 11-point game. We, we ended up winning the second half. Um, excuse me, just losing the second half by seven. But, but cutting in to what the pace was um, to be by the end of the game. So, uh, so, so some good things right there by the guys in a very tough atmosphere. Uh, as we mentioned last week, there hasn't been many times that teams have gone in and won on that floor. We've been fortunate en enough to do that, uh, but we, we, didn't, we didn't this year. But, uh, but again, feel like, uh, of course, I want the, the guards to pick it up a little bit, but we're talking about three or four high, high level uh, college players that they have, especially with number four, uh, Wilson Frame, number five, Edwards. Both of those guys are so good. And um, I don't want to take anything away from our guy's effort. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, sometimes in life there's, there's somebody that's maybe, you know, shoot, they're, they're taller, the faster. God gave them a little more. And, um, and so, so those guys played great for them. But our guys competed and, and tried the best they could. And if you look at Wilson Frame and Edwards, both of them had 22 points. Half of their points came from those two, those two men. Well, that's a great point too. <laughs> the, uh, um, you know, that's a uh, that's a good point. That's half their their team, and and uh, you know, it's a fine line for a coach because uh, we we want to put our men in the best position we can um, to be successful. The first time we tried to deny those two guys the ball, uh, that didn't work, and um, we we weren't successful doing that as a group. Uh, so this time we decided to to play, play those two men a little more straight up, but be a little tighter on them uh, than we were previously when they do catch the ball. And, and they just proved to be very active all over the court. Um, you know, they rebound well, they run the lanes well, they finish well, they shoot the three well, they can put it on the deck and shoot pull-up jumpers. And so just uh, uh, give them credit, you know. Uh, but, but our guys did, they competed and played well. And like I say, we lost the first half by 11 second half by seven, um, and uh, uh, we, we, we come away with a loss, and, and that's, that's discouraging, but I think at this point we're trying to build, we're trying to stay confident the best we can uh, in order to have a good week this week. Um, and then two big games this week. We'll move on and talk about those. Um, Wednesday night, we have five panel conference games mm -hmm. left. Three are at home. That's right. Um, so three of the five are at home. I have Pensacola State coming over. They're 12 and 10 overall, two and five in the panel conference. Um, and back on, we lost to them at Pensacola, 76-69 uh, in a battle over there in their place. 
yeah, that's right, it was a battle. And, and uh, they were able to pull it out at the end. Um, you know, we, we kept chipping away and we got it down to two or three. And, and then they were able to make some free throws at the end and put us away. Uh, but it was a battle. Um, we're able to watch them Saturday night. They played a great game against Chipola. It was at Pensacola. Um, and they were able to come away with a two-point victory. Uh, so um, a good win for them that they're coming off of. Uh, we'll, we'll have our hands full and, and we'll have to really be ready to play. Uh, but as we worked out Friday, um, Thursday, excuse me, Friday and Saturday morning, um, you know, this past weekend, uh, the, guys, the guys have a hunger still. And as a coach, you, you really appreciate that. You know, the chances of, of us making it to the state tournament's an extremely long shot. And we, we talk about game by game, um, you know, the coaches and the men when we're together as a team. Um, but, but there's still a hunger there. There's still a desire to, to pick up victories, to represent themselves well. And so I appreciate that. And so I've got to do uh, the best job I possibly can, of course, along with Coach Vogler and Coach Jackson, who are doing a great job as assistants. I've got to do the best job I can coming up with a game plan, coming up with motivational techniques in order to give the men uh, what they need to be successful out there Wednesday night against Pensacola. So we spent time um, as coaches watching film. Uh, we've spent a lot of time talking and discussing what we think we need to do and some adjustments maybe we can make to, to get us over that hump and, and give us an edge uh, so that today in practice, we started a little bit on it even on Friday and a little bit Saturday, but uh, today in practice and tomorrow in practice that we're doing everything we can to put those young men that are working hard and representing the college well in a great position to win. Um, so I think that you'll see a few things Wednesday night that, uh, you know, as a former coach, you'll notice. I don't know maybe that all the fans would pick it up and notice it. Um, you'll see some things that we're going to adjust and do a little differently. Um, will it work? You don't know. You don't know until you try it, but uh, we're not going to continue um, to just try the same game plan as last time and, and hope for a better result. We're, we're going to try to do some things to make ourselves better and, uh, and help those guys uh, succeed. So, so that's where we are right now with the, the Wednesday night game. So, and, and, and you talk about that. Pensacola will do the same thing. They watch the game tape. They'll make mm -hmm. some adjustments. You'll make some adjustments. And you put your game plan in, and at the end of the night, we'll know if it was a good one or a bad one. Yeah. And, and it could still be a great good game plan. It may not have been executed perfectly also. The, so all, all of those are factors. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, but the, the men are going to do their part. I have faith in that, and I have faith in them. Um, and, you know, I, well, this is not really – well, I guess I would say this is very atypical uh, type statement from me. Uh, but sometimes you can compete and, and play okay and at the end of the night not score as many points as the other team. Um, hate to have that. I think, feel like that's kind of a loser mentality, and I don't want to have that. But, but there probably is some truth to that. Um, but like I say, we're, we're concerned and, and we're dead set on winning the ballgame Wednesday night against Pensacola. You know, Kenai Coles is a great player. Uh, Harrison Curry is a great player. Both of those men for Pensacola, top 100 returners in the nation. Of course, Jeremy Harris was also. And then they have Allen, number three, their point guard, that's just been playing really nice basketball lately. And, and so he's, he's a very good player too. And then they've got very good pieces and capable players around those three. Uh, so good team, talented, um, you know, and, and it could go either way Wednesday night, but uh, but the guys are really preparing well, and, and I'm, I'm liking where we're going. Um, and then Saturday, uh, we'll finish up the three-game series against Chipola in the Billy Harrison Field House. Back on January 7th, the Commodores defeated him 106-87, and then we lost on January 24th at Chipola 86-75. Um, Chipola 19-6 overall, 3-4 and four in the panel conference, ranked number 10 in the state coaches poll. Uh, that will be another battle because that's traditionally one of our rivalry games for us. Yeah, that's right. It'll be fun that Saturday night. Um, Chipola is, is having a good overall season. Um, and, and so we know that, that when we get together, it's always a good battle. Big night. That night will be a big night for Jeremy Harris and Van Johnson. Um, you know, they'll have an opportunity uh, their sophomore year to win the season series against Chipola. So. Um, it'll be good for those guys and, and the rest of the team. It'll be a good atmosphere. And so we're looking forward to that game as well. 
a big week for us um, in order, uh, you know, we, we have 15 wins and um, played 29 games, so, so we, we've done okay. Uh, but, but we really want to finish strong and get us, uh, we'd like to win five more, but, but get us two, three, four more wins right here and finish the season strong so it can be a, a good season or a really good season instead of just, an, you know, an okay 500 season and uh, or a little bit above 500 season. So a uh, big week for us with two home games. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had two away games back to back, and, and we suffered uh, the seven point loss at Pensacola. And then uh, we gave up a lead and lost to Chipola at Chipola. So, hopefully, this time the ball will bounce in our favor a little bit. And with hard work and dedication, uh, we'll be able to pick us up a couple of wins. Well, pick us up. And for any team to be able to say they've won the series against Chipola is a big thing. Because Chipola is a traditionally a a strong basketball program. There's not many yeah. teams out there can say they won two of the three. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. They're they're strong. Coach Campbell does a great job. I mean, you just you look at their lineup and and it's uh, uh, you know big time players with with big time names. Uh, of course, Chipola has always been able um, to do that and and do that very very well. So uh, it's always fun when we get together. I know that the Panama City people. Uh, and the Gulf Coast folks, um, they, they enjoy beating Chipola, and the Chipola folks enjoy beating Gulf Coast, and that, that goes way back before I was born, um, being a child of the 80s. So, um, so, so you know, it's just fun tradi uh, tradition there and rivalry, uh, and it's good for junior college basketball to have games like that. So, so if we look at the panel conference standings right quick, Northwest Florida State College 7-0, and Tallahassee Community College 5-3, and Chipola College 3-4, and Pensacola State College two and five, and Gulf Coast State College one and six. Mathematically, still could be panel conference runner-up or second place uh, yeah. if, if if the men win out. Yeah, there there's uh, there's there's a chance there. We try to think about the process and about the little pieces to the best you can. We're we're humans, um, and so we do think of the big picture. Some uh, right now, the men are working hard enough. Uh, the coaching staff, we're working hard enough. We want to get a win. Right. Uh, we we want to win Wednesday night and uh, and kind of get a little bit of that uh, that juice back um, because we've had some close ones, we've had some some tough ones, um, but it can kind of snowball on you if you're not careful when you're playing in such a good league. And so here we are with a couple of home games this week, and and we're kind of chomping at the bit, ready to ready to play and 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 get us a win. So so. Commodores will be at home. Women will play at 5.30 on Wednesday night. Men will play at 7.30 against Pensacola State. And home again in the Bill Harrison Fieldhouse on Saturday, 5.30 and 7.30. So two big games. Both teams come out and support the Commodores in the Billy Harrison Fieldhouse this week. And for Coach Jay Powell, I'm James Faxley. Thanks for watching, Commodore fans, and we'll see you next time on the Commodore Sports Network. This has been Coach's Corner with your host, James Baxley.